So, you know, when a Muslim, he says Islam can stand the test. Actually, I wanted to talk about a comment in the uh, in the comment section, a Muslim he post. You know, the Muslim, they have like a, a, supposedly they are people of logic, you know, you know, Muslims, people of logic. I mean, they have God, you believe in him, he give you penis. Obviously logical, you know, penis endless and you have a lot of sex. That's logical. And your orgasm will be 70 years. That's very logical. So, a Muslim, he post a comment. His name is Yuki. Yuki. He said, you ask the Christians, who is God? They said, Jesus. Who was in the grave? Jesus. Who rejected, who rejected Jesus? God. <laughs> I mean, those conversations are very funny. Abdul is stupid idiot. The one who resurrected Jesus is Jesus. Jesus said, you can destroy this temple and I will build it in three days. And the three days here is symbolic for him, the Father, the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said, before Abraham I am. Which means the existence of Jesus have nothing to do with the existence of the flesh. Jesus by the flesh is born in a day and a time. But Christ, the Lord, is always there. This is why Jesus said, before Abraham I am. The Jews, they said to him, how you can be before Abraham? You are not even 50, 40 years old. How you can such a, such a thing? He said to them, truly I say to you, that even Abraham, he saw my day and he rejoiced for it. So when most of them, try to make a funny conversation, we laugh at you. Who is Allah, brother? He is the God. Who is the best of the creators? Allah. How many creators you have? Only Allah. But he is Allah, the best of the creators. Who is Jesus, brother? He is the prophet Isa. Who is his mother, Mary? Who is his father? The Gimut. Isn't it everyone is born have a father? Adam wasn't born. Adam is made from mud. So, when they try to come with logic, Islam is the last religion to speak about logic. Is it logical that Jesus is born of a woman, she have no man? How come you accept that? How come the Muslims don't debate us about this? Because their prophets say so. Because their prophets say so, not a single Muslim argue about it. But imagine if the coward Muhammad, he did not say so. Muslims will be laughing at you. And here you see that Muslims, they are willing to jump over logic when they want. And they are logical when they want. It is logical that Jesus is the son of Mary and he is alive until now for thousands of years. It's logical. It's logical that Muhammad is the best of the prophet, but he is dead in the grave and he stink. The Muslim did not bury him. He thought he is the same as Jesus. He will not stink. He will come back. He said to them, we are the prophet promised by Allah that our body will not decay. So the poor Muhammadan, they did not bury him for three days. And then he stink, as Ibn Abbas, he said, as the hadith of the Muslim says, as their book says, قَدْ رَبَى بَطْنَهُ His belly stink and full of fart. قَدْ إِنْسَنَا خُنْصُرُهُ And his, 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 his fingers are, are collapsing. And his nails became blue. You know, Mecca is very hot. 50, 55 degrees during daytime. There's no air conditions. Three days you did not bury a man. What will happen to him? They believed him. And then when he stink, they buried him with his clothes because they can't even wash him no more. The Muslim, they say, oh, a prophet, we should not wash him because he's holy. But he stink, how he's holy. And why Allah, he made him little stink. And how Muhammad, he says, our body will not decay. And then we find that his body decay. You know, when we speak about the crucifixion of Jesus, maybe I should make just a video about this topic. When we talk about the death of Christ, you remember this was the, dead, the death of the flesh. No one can kill God. 
No one. And remember that Jesus is exist or Christ is exist before the flesh of the man Jesus. So they kill which was not even exist before, but still Christ was exist. Are we listening? When Christ he said before Abraham I am, he is speaking about his existence before he became a flesh. For God, he loved his word, he sent the word, he sent his only begotten son. And God, he humbled himself, he took a flesh of a man. He humbled himself. So the flesh of Jesus is the humble God who was exist before became a flesh. The Muslim, they lie, they say, Christian believe that your God got killed. Our God, existence have nothing to do with the flesh is a humble image of the glorious God. So they kill the flesh of Jesus, but nobody can kill God. And you will see Jesus when he speak about himself and he say to the Jews, if a man he keep my saying, he shall never see death. Then they say the Jews to him, <laughs> Now we know that this, you know, this person has a devil. Look what he's saying. The one who keep my saying, which means he's saying he's God. Well, who are you saying who? Don't we have the law of the Torah? Don't we have the law of Moses? Why, who, what do you mean my saying? But they do not know that God is speaking to them and he is the one who gave Moses the orders. And then he says, Abraham is dead and the prophet and you you say it the man who keep my saying he shall never taste of death how that can be are they greater than our father Abraham look the, look at the question the question is not are you a prophet the question is not uh, you know you claim to be knowledgeable rabbi are you claiming to be greater than our father Abraham, which is dead? Our greatest father, Abraham, is dead. So are you saying you are way higher than him? And even you, you maybe you will not, you know, like you are over death. And the prophet are dead. Who make you think of yourself? What do you think of yourself? Jesus said to them, if I honor my, myself, my honor is nothing, but my father, he honor me. Who you say that he is your God? So Jesus just told them that your God is my father. Yet you have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say, I know him not, I shall be a liar, like unto you. But I know him, and I keep his saying. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it. Here, Jesus gave them a shocking statement. He claimed that Abraham... which is an ancient man compared to those people. He see my day. He rejoiced when he saw it. Those people, they went crazy. How Abraham, he saw the day of this man. They said to him, you are not even 50 years old. And yet, you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham I am. And as Sidi Abdul will say to you, Where Jesus says, I'm God. Do you see the word I am? This is Yahweh. 
This is how God, he says to Moses, how I call you, what I will say. He said to them, tell them I am who I am. So Jesus saying to them that Abraham he, so my day. Abraham he spoke to me. Abraham he rejoiced to have my day. Before Abraham I am, I am God. And then they took stones to kill him. Why? Because he just said he's God. And then they say to you, where, where Jesus says, I am God, worship me. He just said, Abraham, he worshiped me. Abraham, he saw my day. Abraham, he rejoiced from my day. I am before Abraham. Jesus, he confirmed that his existence is not the day he was born of a woman, his, her name is Mary. His existence have nothing to do with that date. That is the day when he came as a man. When Jesus says, I am the living God, You see, most of the translation, because they are giving you an English translation. If you go to John and read the Aramaic, the Aramaic translation, Adam saying, it doesn't say I am God, it says I am. And my friend, that's because of your ignorance. Because this is how the God of the Christians, he present himself by saying, I am. I just told you that Moses has said to God, what I shall call you? Huh? What he said? He said, I am. So you cannot see it because of your ignorance. You see it? What I will share tell you, okay, I will go to my people, tell them that God spoke to me. What I will tell them, what's your name? Who are you? He said, I am who I am. This is how God, he presents himself. Now, some Christian, they consider this as a name, but it is not really a name. But when you hear it in a foreign language, it sounds like a name. But this is how God in the Bible present himself. I am. No name can describe God. And no name can show his glory. This is why you see all the scriptures never really give a name to, the, to our Lord. Because there's no name can describe him. And no name fit, fit with him. And if he's the only one, why he need even a name? All what we have in the Bible is titles. If you go and read in the Aramaic version, translation, you will see, and then Yeshua spoke again to them and said, I am the living God, the light of the world. You know what? If I say to the for the sake of argument, that this sentence is not here, But he is saying, I am the light of the world. Muhammad, he copied that, he put it in the Quran. He says, Allah is the light of the world. Muhammad, he hijacked the titles of Jesus, claiming that his God is the light of the world. Who is the light of the world? A messenger or God? When people, they follow, they follow a messenger or they follow God. They follow God. Whoever follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall find the light of life. So my friend, 
Jesus, he confirmed over and over who is he. A Muslim, he says to you, well, Jesus says the one who sent me, who he said the one who sent me is the Father. We Christians believe in Trinity. Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. What's the problem? We just heard jihad when he called me saying that we call Allah or Allah he called himself we because that is majestic so the Muslims agree that it is more nice if God is more than one and Allah is desperate to the point he is seeking to be many by saying we my voice become a distance I don't think this is from my side I think this is from your side You know, there's things obvious in the Bible. It says clearly that Jesus is saying, I'm God. As an example, when Jesus said, not only many times I am the living God, when he says, I am from above. Okay, what does that mean? Is Muhammad from above? No. Is Abraham from above? No. Is Moses from above? No. Jesus not only he said to them I am from above he said to them you are from below Jesus he confirmed that all mankind they are from below he is from above and he is not of this world and yet they say to you where Jesus says, I'm God, worship me. How clear it can be more than this. You are from beneath. And remember, Jesus speak to them. He is in the earth. He was not talking then when he was in heaven. He's speaking, standing in the same land they are standing on. You are from beneath, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. How we can explain such a thing? Look how powerful this is statement. Amazing. Look how confident he is. He is not saying, oh, all of us, we are the same, uh, like, you know, that, you know, these days, you know, everybody is, aware, you know, no, 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 he's saying to them, you are nothing. I'm nothing like you. I'm nothing like you, and you are nothing like me. That is the word of my Lord, the glorious Messiah. So you follow Muhammad, the one who was busy after a five years old kid. The one who go to his son's house and when the wife was alone, he flirted with her and later he forced the husband to have her, to give her to him. The criminal, the, the gang, the, the child molester, the rapist, the thief. How in the world do you follow someone like Muhammad? How dare you? So I say to my brothers and sisters in Christ, I am the sinner man saying to you, our sin is a great. Our sin actually should not be forgiven. But his glory and his love, making things possible. Not because we deserve it, but because he loves us. For the first time, God, he said, those are my children. He don't want slaves. He considers us as children. That is a true love. This is why when they asked Jesus how to pray, he said, say this, 
or like this our father our father look how much loving this word is our God he care for us he is our father their God he is collecting slaves for he is the devil there's a huge difference between God who wants slaves and God he consider you a child he care for you we have a loving God they have a slave collector God our God penalty not because he hate us but because we refuse his love so he say okay I cannot force you I tried my best to save you God is like a firefighter he come to your house he see a fire and smoke coming from your roof and he say listen come with me I can save you fire is going to burn you you say no get out of here it was your choice the atheists they say to you well what kind of God if you don't accept him he will burn you why not he warned you he called you many times he called you every day he spoke to you he sent even his only begotten son to knock at your door and say come out and you reject so why you complain we follow the amazing messiah they follow a prophet who received the prayer of God when he was doing purple. And not only he received it when he was doing purple, he received it and he ran before he received it. Until somebody told him, Why well, you run, you idiot? Wait, wait, see, and what the why the guy, who is this guy talking to you? How that can be from God? A God who is sending his revelation to his prophet when the prophet is doing poopoo and the prophet who run when he hear the revelation and then a guy he is supposedly the cousin of the cousin of the cousin of the neighbor he says to him why you don't wait and see what Allah want to say to you or what this voice is about so whenever the prophet he goes out to do poopoo he hear the voice saying oh Muhammad he flee can you believe it? He flee. A person who have God in his side, he will not flee when he hear a voice coming from God. Mary was a woman. She did not flee when the angel and the same angel came to Muhammad supposedly came to her. Did she flee? Muhammad he flee while he's doing poo, poo and his God cannot wait I have 24 hours a day he wait for him until he go out to do poo, poo and then he speak to him who in the world want to believe such a garbage so I want to say to you guys thank you very much for being here don't forget to download my videos as you know I don't keep my videos on my channel some of you says where's your video the previous ones, I don't keep them because YouTube hate me. I'm one man army. People think I have assistance, I have etc. I do my work alone. So the only way for you to keep my videos alive is to download my videos, repost it in different channel. You can cut them pieces like the guy who called me. They give it a name, they give it a different title, whatever you want, based on the topic happening in the debate. So your help is needed, but the help is not for me. I do not need your help. I'm the last one who need help, to be honest with you, when it's come to this cult. I'm here to help you, not the opposite. I'm here spending my day. It is a beautiful Sunday. I can go out. I can do whatever I want. But I spend hours and hours from my own day, repeating the same garbage for years after years. Not because I love it, but because I love to save you and save your kids from the deception. 
Otherwise, I'm sick of it. Honest to God, I'm so sick of this garbage. People call you names. People threat you. People want to humiliate you. People make videos about you. People, 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 people. But do they count? No. For the Lord, he said, look for the truth and the truth will set you free. And my friend, I'm a free with Jesus. No intimidation can take us down. And no threat can make us scared. Our church father used to be given as food for beasts and they never denied Jesus. Food for the cats. For fun. Just because they are Christians. With the Christ we are winners. Without him we are losers. So we might lose a few hours of our day. But how many people will leave Islam after watching this? How many souls will be saved and they will leave the cult of Muhammad? How many people they were thinking to convert to such a garbage cult? And now they knew that this is not even considered as a cult. It is just a mix of cults. It's a collection of cults. And by the way, those who speak Russian, don't forget to download my second book in Russian. It's for free. I post the link for you in Patreon. You can go there and you can download it and share it with your friend. Even if you don't speak Russian, download the book. Post it somewhere. Post it if you have like a Russian friend, Facebook, Twitter, whatever. It's for free. It's a gift from me for those who speak Russian. And as long as the Lord, he provide me. I will give for free as much as I can. So I want to say thank you for all those who support us and those who stand with us by downloading, by adding subtitles to the videos, by donation, by everything you do. For the Lord, he said, walk and I will walk with you. Our Lord, he, he loves people who work, not only people who pray. People who pray only, they are not decent Christians. Because the tree shall bear fruits. And the Lord, he said, from their fruits, you shall know them. So the question for every one of us today, what was your fruit for today? And what is your fruit for tomorrow? Think about it. Time goes so fast. The house you built, Somebody will take it, trust me. The house I live in, it used to be for somebody else before me. And somebody else will take the house I am in after me. I'm not going to stay in this house. This is not my house. Even the grave is not my grave. I don't own it. I don't, you will not own an inch in this earth. You own nothing. So spend your life to collect maybe money, maybe furniture, maybe cars. I cannot deny we need those things. But the biggest collection is what you do for tomorrow. Time will come and you will face the Lord and he will say to you what you brought to me. What? What you did? Then you need to ask yourself what the answer will be. A bank account, nice cars, successful business. What you did? Did you even bring one person to Christ? Did you help somebody to believe in him? So you go, you spend your life, you became 70, 80, 90, and then you come back empty-handed. How horrible it is. So I say to you, my friend, do your best. Be a servant with love to the Lord. He don't want the slaves, as you know. We say that already. He want people who love to serve. The Lord Himself, He washed the feet of His disciples. If you ask yourself why He did wash the feet, this is the Lord Himself to give us an example. Never be proud. Always be humble. The master is the servant, not the opposite. So
So those who serve, they will be called masters. And those who wash feet, they will be respected. And those who serve the Lord from their heart, their heart will gain what they deserve. From their fruits, you shall know them. One small sentence better than books. People say things. Dress nice. Perfume, watches, jewelries, nice houses. There's one way. From their fruits, you shall know them. With the word of the Lord, we say to you good night, good day, and may the Lord bless your Sunday and bless your coming week. Christ is Lord, Islam is false, and we prove it every day. Take care. Bye-bye.